saluting our national heroes and the everyday ones. Two things we will be doing in this Friday's edition of Jamaica Magazine. This year, 179 persons will be receiving awards, and these are persons in whom, as Jamaicans, we are well proud. Yes, broadcaster Faye Ellington, the lady usually in front of the camera, will again be in that same position, but for a different reason. This year, she joins over 200 Jamaicans to receive special recognition on Heroes Day. Stick around for that. Plus, the story of a breast cancer survivor. I'm Theodore Henry. Welcome. We get down to brass tacks after these messages. Good day, I'm Tamar McHale and this is your GIS News for Friday, October 16. Government continues to meet its fiscal targets, with several of them exceeding expectations. The Economic Program Oversight Committee EPOC told reporters on Thursday that tax collection for the April to August 2015 period was $1.7 billion ahead of target. The biggest performer, company tax, was $2 billion more than budgeted. If businesses are making money, then they pay taxes and if the taxes are ahead of last year by 28%, and ahead of budget by $2 billion, then um, I think that augurs well in terms of uh, perhaps growth in the economy. The special consumption and general consumption taxes were also more than budgeted, but there was a shortfall in telephone tax collection and customs duty. The primary balance and net international reserves, meanwhile, were more than targeted. Expenditure for the period was $11 billion below budget. At Thursday's EPOP briefing, the co-chairman also hailed two recent major business investments, saying they were votes of confidence in Jamaica. Mr. Biles pointed to Heineken's announcement that it had bought Diageo's shares in Red Stripe. And we'll make an offer to the minority shareholders in Jamaica. 600 million US dollars. Heineken, an international company, is saying, I'm prepared to put in Jamaica and I think that is a tremendous vote of confidence. He also pointed to Charisma Hotel's announcement that it would invest about $900 million in Jamaica over the next 10 years to add 4,000 rooms to the hotel's stock. A pension plan for the tourism sector is scheduled for implementation by January 2017. Tourism Minister Dr. Wickham McNeil says he has instructed the Pension Reform Committee established earlier this year to have the policy in place within the next 14 months. While more than 30,000 people are directly employed in the sector, a study conducted by the ministry revealed that less than 10% of tourism workers had a pension plan. The minister says this must change as the government moves to deepen the linkages between tourism and other sectors. More importantly, we want to see tourism as a, a tool for social and economic growth. Dr. McNeil was speaking with GIS News at the recent Tourism Awareness Week Expo in New Kingston. The Technology Ministry says it's committed to having data protection legislation in place by the 2016-2017 fiscal year. State Minister Julian Robinson says, among other things, the Act will safeguard the privacy of personal data and regulate the collection, processing, storing, use and disclosure of certain information in physical or electronic form. This legislation, Mr. Speaker, will have significant and far-reaching implications for persons who manage data financial services institutions, governmental institutions, but it's really designed to ensure that individuals who share data online have appropriate um, protection. Minister Robinson was speaking in Parliament on Tuesday during debate on the Cyber Crimes Act which was passed. He told the House that the technical measures component of the cybersecurity strategy was quite advanced. We have already trained 
over 40 persons in the public sector. We have gotten the physical equipment, we have identified a location, and we expect the cyber emergency team to be operational before the end of this year. Meanwhile, Science and Technology Minister Philip Paulwell is given assurance that the Cyber Crimes Act is not designed to trap innocent bystanders. He was speaking on Tuesday as the House of Representatives made amendments to the Act. Among other things, it will include additional offences and impose stronger fines and penalties for cyber criminals. These crimes require an act and an intent. And we have been faithful to ensure that both aspects are provided for so no innocent bystander will be caught by this no nobody who is engaged in doing ict business programming software development what you name it will be caught by this with new rules governing the ganja industry in jamaica there is a call for the financial sector to be vigilant and ensure that only legitimate proceeds from the industry pass through their institutions Recent amendments to the Dangerous Drugs Act have paved the way for the establishment of a cannabis licensing authority to regulate ganja and hemp for medicinal, therapeutic and scientific purposes. As such, Foreign Affairs Minister Senator A.J. Nicholson says financial institutions must be alert. In doing so, you must continue to be vigilant to ensure that funds which pass through your institutions are acquired only through the regulated trade in cannabis and cannabis-related products, which are legal. Senator Nicholson was speaking at the 4th Anti-Money Laundering and Counterfinancing Terrorism Conference. And finally, National Heroes Day celebrations will this year begin by honoring those who hold the highest honor available to any Jamaican. In the past, there was usually a salute to these heroes in the afternoon at the Heroes Park. But we've decided to change things up a bit this year and to begin the day by saluting these heroes who have all led us in such an important way in their various time periods. So I think it's, it's an important gesture. The wreath-laying ceremony for the National Heroes will be led by the Governor General, Prime Minister, Leader of the House, President of the Senate, Cabinet Minister Lisa Hanna, the Mayor of Kingston and Chief Justice. It will be followed by the annual Honours and Awards Ceremony at King's House. Over 200 Jamaicans will be awarded for contribution to national development in various areas, including academia, public service, sports and culture. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Tamar McHale. Thanks for watching. The JIS Heritage Essay Competition is here again. If you're a primary or preparatory school student aged 9 to 12, you may enter. Write an essay on the topic, A Day in the Life of My Favorite National Hero. Ensure your essay is 400 to 500 words. Include a title page and list of references, with JIS being one of the sources. And submit the essay using the application form on the JIS website, jis.gov.jm. Deadline is Saturday, October 31, 2015. So start writing your essay today! For more information, contact the Jamaica Information Service at 926-374026, extension 2137 or 2023, or email heritageessay at jis.gov.jm. Next Monday, October 19, Heroes Day, 223 Jamaicans will receive national honors and awards for their outstanding contribution to different sectors of society. One such individual is Faye Ellington. That's right, the veteran broadcaster. That same voice you hear during the annual National Honors and Awards Ceremony. Here's her story. And she's royal, yeah, so royal. Yeah, yeah change my shift to them, man, because where you can't see and I see them out when sun up. No problem to neck back. Shift change, can I help you, man? You better tell whoever I write to say your address moved. <laughs> take a cool beer, man. Cause it look like I caught one catch on fire. For my spot, they must catch your mouth too. Wow. Hey, wait, look where I'm going, man. <laughs> <laughs>
But we're talking about Whitliffe Bennett. When we speak of Whitliffe Bennett, we speak of the arts, we speak of theater, we speak of broadcasting. Mr. Bennett, Colon, Panama, why did your parents go there? Well, my parents were missionaries. As you join me here on the tarmac at the Norman Manley International Airport, we are awaiting the arrival of the 44th President of the United States of America, Barack Hussein Obama. Ah, and here he is, the 44th President of the United States of America, about now to make his way down these steps to touch down on Jamaican soil. Faye Audrey Ellington, affectionately called Auntie Faye, is well-loved and celebrated by all Jamaicans. Born and raised in her dearly beloved parish of Clarendon, she has risen to the heights of journalism, hailed as a master broadcaster, actress, master of ceremonies, lecturer, trainer, and speaking coach. In 1998, she was awarded the Order of Distinction in the rank of officer for the performing arts. Since then, her continued contribution to the fields of communication, media, education, and culture has far exceeded the level of officer. Now celebrating 41 years in media, Faye Ellington has again been recognized with a national honor in 2015, the Order of Distinction Commander Class. This long time, girl, me never see you. Come and behold you, honey. It is a long time. Faye Ellington's extensive knowledge of broadcast presentation, programming and production, with specialization in the coverage of national and state events, spans more than four decades. In that time, she has hosted the television streaming of the annual National Honors and Awards Ceremony, a collaborative effort with the Jamaica Information Service. This year, 179 persons will be receiving awards, and these are persons in whom, as Jamaicans, we are well proud. Her work in radio and television, which began in 1974 and included 12 years as the host of Morning Time on the then JBC, is regarded as a benchmark for industry standards. In 1988, she received a bronze Musgrave medal for her contribution to broadcasting. And in December 2012, Faye Ellington was recognized by the Press Association of Jamaica as an outstanding news anchor and veteran journalist. She's also a British Broadcasting Corporation BBC certified trainer. And if you sin, condemn you so. I was scratching to my eyes, I'm tearing up. It's a very simple harmony, you know, that and that's the beautiful. key. It's that's the key beautiful. to it. People think that you have to add something. But how the people sing comes from their very souls. And all you have to do is listen. Outside of reaching out to our young people, our children, especially those who have found themselves dispossessed, disadvantaged, mm. unfulfilled, mm. I know that that is a passion. But is there any one thing outside of that that Olive Lloyd has not yet done that she wants to do very bad? Oh, there's so many things, Faye. So many, so many things. This long time, girl, may never see you. Come and behold you. An accomplished actress, Ms. Ellington, has received several nominations, awards, and accolades for her riveting and diverse portrayals in theater. She received an Actor Boy Award in 2005. When dark marker, he ain't big. And when puss hungry, he knows clean. But every puss and dark no know what independence mean. Matty say it mean with PST. Stand up and with dignity. And we don't allow nobody to take liberty with me. More some over, we must tell Mark that we don't like we position. Please kindly take me out of sea and draw we in a ocean. And it's not only in communication and the arts that this outstanding Jamaican has made an indelible mark. Long is the list of her contributions to public service. Her experience and record need no explanation. But it's also her affable nature, warm smile and endearing personality which have no doubt given Ms. Ellington longevity and high honors in her career, securing a place in the hearts of Jamaicans home and abroad. Thank you. Could I have a fanfare, Fab Five? Give me a proper fanfare, now, guys. Allow me, I'm just going backstage to change into my swimwear. <laughs> you know, I think so. We can't wear swimwear. 
me have nice legs, you know. And she's royal, yeah, so royal. While we salute our everyday heroes, we all have to remember our national heroes, those who paved the way for us, fought for our freedom to ensure that you and I can enjoy life to the maximum. Today we highlight Samuel Daddy Sharp. It was Christmas time in 1831 and Samuel Sharp, an educated Creole slave and a deacon at the Birchall Baptist Church in Montego Bay, was fine-tuning the plans for the first sit-down labor strike in Jamaica. It was a master plan. It was a bold plan. It was way ahead of its time. And it was done in circumstances which were threatening and difficult because there was no freedom. And because the laws said it was OK for men to be slaves, for people to be slaves. So there's nothing on their side except way over in England, some emancipators. Because even their missionaries were telling them, take it easy, don't do anything. Remember the Bible says, submit to your masters and be quiet and content. You know, so there was nothing on their side except this feeling that this obscenity had to end with their generation and not go any further. The plan was to have an all-island sit-down strike by slaves at the end of the three-day Christmas holidays between December 25 and December 27. It was the ideal time as the sugarcane crop would be ready for harvesting by then, and if it wasn't reaped quickly, the crop would spoil. To lose a whole crop of cane spelled certain economic disaster for the island, which depended heavily on sugar as the main income earner. Sam Sharp believed that the planters would be compelled to negotiate freedom and salaries for the slaves returned to work. What um, Sam Sharp said, you know, we're going to sit down quietly and we're now working again until they pay us. And somebody asked him, but what if they force us, if, if they try to force us to work? He says, then you have to make up your mind. Either you're going to fight or what? But there was that down the road if the thing didn't work. The plan of passive resistance didn't work. On December 27, the Kensington Estate Great House was set on fire. It was felt that several slaves, drunk from the lavish distribution of rum during the merry season, started the fires. The destruction and the terrible loss of lives on that day and ensuing months have gone down in the pages of history as the Christmas Rebellion. Sam Sharp's freedom campaign never turned out the way he planned. He gave himself up to the authorities in a bid to end the slave killings and accepted responsibility for the rebellion, even though a number of actions were taken that did not meet with his approval. He was found guilty of inciting rebellion and administering unlawful oaths. How long shall they kill our prophets while we stand aside and look? Some say it's just a part of it. We've got to fulfill the book. I would rather die upon yonder gallows than live in slavery. His tremendous courage was seen even to the point of death when he was hanged on the 23rd of May at the age of 31 years. Is all I ever 
redemption songs redemption songs redemption songs it doesn't matter that the whole of the legal system said it was okay and that even some of the churches felt it was all right as far as they were concerned it was a violation of humanity and of the compact between man and God and it had to end. And I think the whole question of how he went about mobilizing the people against this great evil in the face of what was almost certain death if they failed is something that we have to be very, very appreciative of. Daddy Sharp, as his followers affectionately called him, is now seen as the predecessor of the trade union movement as he fought for the labor rights of slaves. Sam Sharp's life holds many valuable lessons for Jamaicans today. Although born in poverty, regarded as nothing more than an inanimate object by society, he taught himself to read, argued constructively, and presented himself always as a man of honor. This man of remarkable intellect, courage, and physical and moral authority succeeded in imparting his vision to more than 20,000 slaves in five parishes, instilling in them the desire to fight for the freedom so many of us enjoy today. It was his selflessness which propelled Sam Sharp to hero status in 1975. A monument to his self-sacrifice now stands in the heart of Montego Bay, in a square named in his honor. Sam Sharp, freedom fighter, martyr, national hero. There'll be a better tomorrow. 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 Tomorrow. Today, October 16, is World Mammography Day. People do mammograms to screen for breast cancer, and these mammograms have saved the lives of many women by detecting tumors early to prevent breast cancer. In recognition of the day, we highlight a breast cancer survivor, Andrea Howell. I was diagnosed with breast cancer in March 2010. My daughter was one year old at the time, and uh, my doctors recommended that a mastectomy was the best way to go based on the tumor that I was diagnosed with and how it had spread in my breast. My husband and I decided that we would go with the doctor's recommendation, and the mastectomy was done on April 4th. <laughs> 2010. After mastectomy, once again based on the tumor that I had, um, I was encouraged to do chemotherapy and I had to do six treatments of chemotherapy. And after chemotherapy, once again, based on the treat based on the tumor that I had, I had to go on another drug called Herceptin and that I had to do for 13 months. Herceptin is administered just like chemotherapy intravenously. My support system was excellent and I really hope that other people who have been diagnosed with breast cancer would actually be blessed with the support system that I had. For example, my husband was phenomenal. And my husband would go to my chemotherapy sessions with me. 
he would hold my hand and he would sit through chemotherapy with me and mean chemotherapy was on average two hours. Um, I'm always happy to share my story. I have never felt less than a woman. In fact, I have decided not to do reconstructive surgery. For me, it gives me an opportunity to allow other people to understand that one, your life has not changed at all. Your breast, your body part does not define who you are. Very importantly, that it is not a death sentence. It's a disease like many other diseases that we're going through and that we have to fight. Very importantly, we have to understand that our health, that our life, that our healing comes from above. And this is something that we have to ask our Lord, who is, a, who is our creator and who, is, and who our ultimate healing comes from. We have to put this to him. We have to trust that our healing comes from him. Secondly, you have to listen to the advice of your doctors. I believe that we have excellent health care in Jamaica. I believe that we have some of the best doctors here. And for the treatment that I have received, I wouldn't have exchanged it for anywhere else. And so listen to the advice of your doctors. Do what your doctors ask you to do. Do not listen to people who have never even experienced cancer. Because people who have never had cancer have a tendency to offer advice as for, for cancer treatment. So listen to your doctors. Um, and just don't be afraid. It is what it is. You have to accept it is what it is and you have to do what you have to do to get through it. It's not the end of the world and it is not anything to be scared of. The JIS Heritage Poster Competition is here again. If you are an artistic teenager, the JIS Heritage Poster Competition is just for you. All registered secondary school students are eligible to enter. All you have to do is this. Complete the entry form on the JIS website, jis.gov.jm. Then, create a poster using images provided in the picture resources on the JIS website. And the topic? A moment in the life of a Jamaican national hero. Ensure that your poster is no larger than 11 inches by 17 inches and keep a copy of your poster. Posters will be judged on interpretation of the topic, originality, and presentation. Now for the submission details. Upload computer-designed posters using a cloud storage service such as Dropbox, SkyDrive, or Google Drive. Mail or drop off illustrated posters at the JIS head office or Montego Bay office. Deadline for submission is Saturday, October 31, 2015. So come on, unleash your creativity and win lots of prizes. For more information, contact the Jamaica Information Service at 926-374026, extension 2137-2023, or email heritageposter at jis.gov.jm. And that's it for Jamaica Magazine on this busy Friday evening. As you prepare for the weekend and Heroes Day on Monday, be safe, slow down on the roads, be careful at the beach, and keep an eye out for our children and our precious senior citizens. You may also want to catch up on useful information at jis.gov.jm or on our social media pages. And be sure to share your comments. Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm. I'm Theodore Henry and this has been Jamaica Magazine. Thanks for staying with us. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.